to the Detroit Intern Experience. This is an exciting week. We have uh, a great panel discussion today with some of one of my favorite companies and some of my favorite people. Uh, but before we get into that, we want to always give a shout out to um, our sponsors. Delta Dental of Michigan is our presenting sponsor again this summer this year. Um, without them, we would not be here. So we're so grateful for them. Another one of those, and I'm not even going to do the introduction. We'll get into that because One Magnify is again, another sponsor of ours this year, and we are so grateful for them, but I'm going to let them tell you a little bit about themselves. Um, and I also want to mention that not only this week, do we have a great lineup of speakers tomorrow? We have Emily Siegel, who's talking about the, the, power, and the art of storytelling, which is relevant to everyone. And if you tuned in last week, you know that if you are interviewing, you are telling a story about yourself. So regardless of uh, your major or what you're looking to get into, storytelling is uh, part of who you are, what you will be doing, getting a job, interviewing, all of the above. And we will be joined um, by Emily talking about that tomorrow. Thursday, we're talking about... Uh, how to dress for success. Um, and I'm going to, I'll put them on the spot for a second. Mark, have you ever, or Kara, have you ever made an interviewee on a Zoom or a virtual interviewee stand up so you can see if they're wearing, mm. we've gotten that. No. We're like, so no, you, I have never done that. <laughs> That's no. dangerous. They like, I guess they like, we had a guy who he like runs interviews and he's like, there's very strategic ways. Like, hey, we're going to kick this off and we're going to get up. Everyone stand up and do some jumping jacks. And is their way to see like, do you have gym shorts on? Do you have anything on? Um, <laughs> so anyways, dressing for success, virtually in person, all of the above. That is Thursday at 11. And then Thursday night is our kickoff event. And we are so excited and hope everyone will join us. Um, we are we are trying to entice you by offering free tacos. There will be um, it's at Detroit Axe in Corktown, very cool part of Detroit. Um, we'll have games, cornhole, tacos, all of the above. So please join us Thursday evening from five to seven. It's all free for you. You just have to show up. And on that note, I'm going to turn it over to the lovely folks at One Magnify. Again, one of my favorite companies. I won't try to do it justice. They're going to tell you all about who they are and I'm gonna let them take over. The one other thing I will say is we want this to be about what, about you guys and what you want to hear about. So throughout that, the presentation, please take notes or put it into a chat, your questions that you have. We will open this up to question and answers. Um, and we want to hear what you have, uh, these these burning questions of yours throughout the presentation. So keep that in mind. I'll come back when I'm prompted for Q&A, but uh, take it away. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Carrie. Really appreciate you uh, not panicking when I didn't show up, you know, at 1050 like I was supposed to. And so you're a, you're a true pro. Um, and I'm glad I got here close to on time at 11 o'clock so that we didn't hold everybody up because I know everybody's time is super valuable. Um, so I have a great team joining me today to talk about, not just talk about One Magnify, but really talk about, um, you know, starting off on the right foot. And, you know, we're going to give you some insights into navigating a new role, whether it's a new role as an intern for those of you who are just starting your internships this summer, or maybe some lessons learned for you as you begin your career um, next year and future years when you start your full-time jobs. But um, but we've got a great team that's going to join me today, Afra, Aaron, Luke, and Melissa, and, and Kara, who's also on our, um, our talent management team, is on our call as well. But I'm going to start with one of the best ways to um, you know, kick off a relationship with somebody, and that's to reveal something about yourself. And so I'm going to do that by sharing a little bit about about me, and and not just you know stuff about me from a professional perspective, but also from a personal perspective. Because in our business, it's all about relationships and building relationships, and the best relationships start with um, you know being a person that uh, that is willing to be a little vulnerable and willing to share. Um, some things about themselves so that others will feel comfortable sharing um, with, with them as well. And that's how you, you establish relationships. So I've had four jobs in my life. I was a Domino's pizza guy in the 80s, which was awesome. 
Uh, I served in the U.S. Navy as a submarine warfare officer in the 1990s. Uh, then I went to work for Deloitte, a company that I believe genuinely is one of the greatest client service organizations on the planet. One of the one of the best places to start your career, big, global, uh, really well structured, and and just um, you know a great business. Uh, to get a career started. And, and obviously, it's where I got my civilian career started after I left the Navy. And then in 2006, I had the opportunity to buy into this company, One Magnify, and become the CEO. And so I'm coming up on my 17th year as the chief executive officer and president of the company. That picture there of my wife and I, Eileen, is from 1982. We met in the 10th grade. It's probably October 1982 in that picture. And uh, she didn't know it at the time, but I, I knew it. I think I knew it, that she was going to be my wife one day, hopefully my girlfriend at some point. And uh, we were super close friends in high school. Uh, I always wanted to date her. She put me in the friend zone and kept me there for a long, long time. But I was persistent and persistency pays off. Um, and we started dating in 1985 and dated all through college and we're going to be celebrating 33 years of marriage on September 1st of this year. So that's a little bit about me and uh, I'm really uh, just a, a really fortunate guy to have the opportunities that I've had in my life and and this opportunity to lead One Magnify is, is probably uh, the most exciting thing uh, that I've ever been able to do and really the most fulfilling thing that I've been ever, ever, ever been able to do. So let me give you a little bit of background on One Magnify so you have some perspective on us. We're 56 years old, founded by uh, a couple um, who set up a business in their garage or in their home to do photo lab work for Ford Motor Company. And we've grown to become a combination of a marketing firm, a technology firm, and an analytics firm that brings those three services together uh, to solve our clients' most complex sales and marketing um, activities. Um, if you go to the next slide, I'll give you some numbers. Uh, we have over 700 people who work at our company, more than 200 clients, uh, over 50 years of experience in the automotive, bioscience, financial services, ag, healthcare, and industrial segments. And we have eight offices spread out around the world, the team in China, India, Germany, and then here in the U.S., we have offices in Detroit and Ann Arbor, uh, Wilmington, Delaware, Charlotte, North Carolina, and our most recent office, Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and so we're really fortunate to have a business that has scale, a business that has some depth in the marketing technology and analytics space, and a business um, that has geographic um, access. And so one day I can be talking to clients in Germany, I could be talking to clients in China, I could be working with my team in Chennai where we have about 150 people uh, working there. Our business has grown largely through acquisition. Um, in 2001, we were acquired by a private equity or a family office here in Detroit, Lakeshore Capital. And uh, that business, that individual owned the company all the way up until 2022 when he sold his equity position down to a private equity fund called Crestview Partners. So we're now a private equity owned company. And there's a whole, uh, whole uh, different set of operating expectations when you're owned by a private equity investor versus an individual investor. Um, but we've done a handful of acquisitions over the years. Concordia Group was a business we bought in 2009. They brought a lot of clients to One Magnify in the middle Atlantic states. In 2015, we bought an analytics business in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, they brought us into the ag science and uh, financial services space. And then we did some geographic expansion with opening offices in Shanghai, Cologne, and Chennai. A couple more acquisitions and joint ventures with uh, Traffic Digital. Um, but we had a major rebranding in 2018 when we became One Magnify, essentially combining the Concordia Group, Inclusive Analytics, and then our, our predecessor company, Marketing Associates, into a single brand. And just in the last month, we acquired two companies, RXA, and Splash Analytics to bring about 85 new data science professionals into our company. And so it's it's been a, a great ride and a great combination of organic growth and acquisitive growth. Um, and so those those you know two models for growth have come together to bring su success for us. 
we're a client service organization. So everything that we do is focused on delivering great services to our clients. Um, you can see our mission statement and our vision statement there. Um, but uh, but we, we genuinely believe that we come to work and we're here to serve others in the work that we do for them. We've got a set of values that guide uh, how we treat each other as an organization. Our values center around passion, trust, teamwork, ownership, community, and fun. Uh, Carrie Doman knows that community is a big, big part of our business because when she was setting up her company back in 2007, and we were moving our company from Bloomfield Hills to downtown Detroit, uh, one of the reasons behind that move was to become part of the Detroit community in the center of the city of Detroit. So when I look out my office window, I get to see all the great development that's happening around Campus Marshes Park in the Central Business District. And so I think community sits at the center of what we do. And I also believe that, uh, you know, you're gonna be at work for many, many hours, for many, many days in your life, and you might as well make it fun. Um, and so, so we're big believers in creating a, an environment that is fun and a fun place to be. And in order to do that, we have to have people um, who believe in those values. And, and so we look for folks who make the workplace brighter, people who can think uniquely, people who are really, really committed to delivering high quality products. Um, and, and genuinely, we look for folks who can deliver against that client service uh, perspective around uh, empathetic service to others. And so we, we definitely want folks who can see through our clients' eyes and are able to sacrifice and give uh, to make their clients successful. Um, and again, fun. People who make the workplace brighter. We want to be around folks that, uh, that make it a joy um, to do the work that has to be done. And so it's a really important part of, of who we are as a company. And, and our people, they like it here. Uh, we've grown up to 700 folks. We survey our employees every year. And every year uh, we learn what we're doing well. We learn uh, areas for us to improve. And then we rank ourselves against the competition. And for 10 years now, almost 12 years now, uh, we've been winning awards every single year, whether it's the best place to work, a bright place to work, a top place to work, cool place to work. Um, we don't just talk the talk, we walk the walk and deliver uh, a great culture for our employees to really thrive and, and do well. A um, couple of examples of who our clients are. Uh, you'll see some names there that you recognize, Ford and DuPont and Whirlpool, um, big global brands. You also see some names that you may not recognize, Exalta or Coalesce. Um, these, are, these are companies, and McKesson even, you may not recognize. These are companies that sell through dealers or distributors, and, and we believe we're really good at delivering uh, B2B marketing services um, that ultimately end up in a consumer or an individual's hands for a decision. But, uh, but we have a world-class client base, and we think we deliver world-class services to those clients. Um, we go to market through five practice areas. Um, and so I mentioned marketing technology and analytics are at the core of what we do. And you can see in the left center side of this, this or the left center side of this slide, five practice areas um, that form our go-to-market model. Uh, brand experience, CX strategy and insights, our customer experience strategy and insights practice. We have a digital practice, a loyalty and incentives practice that delivers um, loyalty solutions for our clients. And then we have a dedicated prescriptive analytics practice that came to us through the RxA transaction. So when clients buy our services, they're typically buying services that are aligned to one of those five practice areas. And then the other boxes and shapes you see on there are the supporting solutions that allow us to deliver those practice areas, whether it's an account team, a creative delivery team, or a technology solutions team, or even folks that sit on site with our clients through a client dedicated solutions team. Um, we go to market through those, those five practice areas. And so that's a little bit about One Magnify, who we are, what we do, how we do it, the kind of people who work here. And I think the best way for me to, to you know, sort of connect the dots for you beyond the company to the individuals on our team is to introduce our team and let them talk to you about 
you know, how they got things started in their career. So Afra, you're up, you're up next. Thanks, Mark. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Afra Arif, and a little bit about me. I'm a CX strategist, so I work within the strategy practice area. And I was actually pre-med in undergrad, and I made the pivot to business in 2022. I went to U of M. I did the master's of management, so go blue, any uh, Wolverines out there. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, I'm a lover of hot takes. We'll get into that later. Um, I like watching Formula One, and I really don't like salt bagels. Um, and then I really like to travel. We've been to Banff. We've been to um, several places in India. Um, but it's always nice to go out and explore. Um, that's a little bit about me. And uh, I can talk more about my experience. Um, so fears I had when I started working at One Magnify, I started here, I think, it's been almost a year. I started in August of last year. So um, I faced a lot of imposter syndrome. Um, it was like, what if I actually don't know how to use Excel? Like, oh my God, I don't know how to use any of these commands, but you'll settle into it. You'll know what to do. Um, people will train you. And um, something that's really helpful to transition into any role is to make sure that you're asking questions. And it doesn't matter if they're silly questions or if you think people are going to judge you for them, but it's always nice to have feedback on your work, um, making sure that you're doing things according to either guidelines or um, past examples. Um, and it goes along with being an active participant. So this means like making sure that you're checking in with either with your manager, your team, uh, making sure that you can um, support on projects if you have bandwidth. And then um, building a growth mindset is really important. So even if you fail or you don't know what to do, uh, make sure that you pick yourself back up and you can try better next time. So that's a little bit of that. And then how I personally connected with my team. So Hot Take Tuesdays, it is Tuesday. Um, something me and my team do is that I post a hot take and people comment. Um, it's a way for us to interact even though we're kind of hybrid. Um, but in a different setting, you could always find opportunities to showcase your personality, um, connect with your teammates over like common interests. So I like Formula One, my manager really likes Formula One, um, and we've been getting other people to try and watch as well. So networking is really important, making sure that you're reaching out to people, um, introduce yourself. Um, it's really scary in the beginning, but if you see people, oh, Carrie looks up one too, cool. <laughs> if you see anyone in the hallway, make sure you introduce yourself. Um, it's always nice to just smile. Um, if we ever see Mark or Samir in the office, we always make sure to smile and ask them how their day is going. Um, make sure to attend in-person virtual events. Um, it's really hard for people to come into the office all the time. So make sure you find opportunities to attend hybrid events for um, employee resource groups. So at One Magnify, we have something called Amplify and we do events called Wine and Wisdom um, where we have a, a panel of female um, business leaders and they talk about their experience. So that's a way to get connected. And then just in general, schedule coffee chats or one-on-one -on -one meetings with um, people in your office. So you can learn more about their practice areas, um, getting to know what they do day to day and see if it's something that you're interested in as well. Afra, what is the hot take for today? I don't have one yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone has any good hot takes, let me know. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, Afra. That was awesome. Well, hi, everybody. My name is Erin Michon. Um, I am a Scrum Master here at One Magnify, and I'm very excited to be here. So thank you for having me. A little bit about my professional background. Um, I studied robotics and automation at Open Community College, where I earned an applied associate's degree um, to get me straight into the workforce right after high school and college. So in 2017, I started my first professional career as a controls engineer at Treva Automation. Um, that was really cool. I got to design hardware panels and wiring schematics for autom uh, automotive manufacturing plants. So that was really cool. Um, I did start to lead a small team there. And that's when I started to realize that I liked being in the people business and getting to know on um, the more managerial side of things. So that's when I decided to make a career jump and start at One Magnify in 2022 as a scrum master, where I get to manage uh, work streams and process flows for agile development teams. So it's been a really fun experience in my professional career so far. Um, a little bit about me personally, I like to work out and swap recipes with friends and coworkers. I've actually gotten so many good different cultural recipes uh, in my last year here, which has been a really fun uh, exchanging with my teammates. Um, and then I also like to belt out karaoke tunes with my fiance and friends. 
Um, I also enjoy volunteering with the communities around Detroit with the American Cancer Society Associate Board of Ambassadors. Got a little picture of my group there. Um, and then when I'm not facilitating for my teams or planning fundraisers for the group, you can find like snuggling my three little cats there, Hoodie, Donut, and Linguini. I love my little fur family and will take any opportunity I can to shove them in people's faces. <laughs> So uh, next up, getting connected with my department and starting in a new career. Um, one of the biggest fears that I always faced starting in a new company or going into a new place was being the new kid on the block. Um, I am what they call an extroverted introvert, big emphasis on the introvert. I like what makes me comfortable and what I know. So going to a new company with a bunch of people that you've probably never met before and it's going to be a little scary. Um, the biggest advice I have for that and what's gotten me through to this day is putting on a big fat smile and, you know, greeting everybody with a friendly and inviting good morning. It just, it makes a world of a difference trying to get to know people. Small little things like that can uh, really ease the tension of being somebody new on the team. Um, and then another thing that I had a fear of was being in a different industry. So I came from a automotive manufacturing industry and I jumped into a tech industry, um, very different. So I wasn't sure if I was gonna fit in. You know, I, had the, I knew that I had the skills to get me to the job. I knew that I could support myself, but it's just different. I don't have the experience of all these people around you. They, they've been here for so long. They've been working in this industry. You might be coming from a different industry. You might be coming from school and not having that real world experience. Uh, so it's definitely a real fear to face, but asking some questions, taking notes, uh, those are all really good things to help get over that fear and help you on your way in your first job. Um, also, one small thing was that this was a larger company for me to jump into. My prior company was less than 300 people compared to one Magnify and our fantabulous growth we've had even over the past year that I've been here. Um, so it could be a little intimidating intimidating to find where you're going to sit in that big of a company. But I got really lucky with One Magnify. We have a fantastic company culture. And even though it's a large company, we definitely feel small and familial. So it's been really awesome that way. Some ways that I've transitioned into my role successfully, I'm kind of on the same topics that Afra said, scheduling those check-ins with your managers and teammates, those one-on-ones and coffee chats, getting those in your first month on the job for sure is going to help you um, build those relationships and kind of to that third point, find your people. Um, who is going to relate to you the most? Who is your safe space? Um, where can you go and admit those, you know, those faults that you're having and, hey, I don't feel comfortable saying this to my big boss just yet. Maybe I can talk this through with a coworker and see where I can get the advice from within my team. Um, and the one last thing with asking silly questions, kind of like Afra said, there are no such thing as dumb questions. If you need to ask what an acronym stands for, you know, so many people have been at a company for so long and they don't know what it stands for. Ask the silly question. There's nobody's going to laugh at you. Nobody's going to think less of you. You just need to get that knowledge and searching for knowledge is not dumb. And over here for how I personally got involved with my department, not necessarily my team, was um, I participated in office activities inside the office. Uh, as Opera said, we are a little bit more hybrid. Um, some of us are at home, some of us are in the office today, as you can see. So anytime that I'm in the office and there's something going on, I take my time and I try to participate in it. Um, I attend a company department's events, or uh, sorry, I attend a company events or department events. Um, I also set up team events with my team. Um, that's offering your skills and connections where I have those uh, fundraising skills or fundraising planning skills with my volunteer efforts. So I was able to bring in those skills and opportunities to my new department and offer them up and become a part of it. Um, and then when you start a new career, some of my biggest pieces of advice are to just say yes especially in the beginning parts of your career when you're not too overloaded with work right now, you've got a lot of opportunity to say yes, get those new opportunities on the board. Um, as long as you've got the mental capacity for it and you've got the capability, go for it. You'll be a wonderful resource for people going forward as long as they know you can say yes. Um, with that, people skills always be networking. You never know who's going to help you or who you can help. And then my last tidbit is to give yourself grace. One thing that I struggle with is overthinking, overanalyzing, definitely uh, being my own worst critic. So make sure you give yourself some grace in your first year or so at the company because there's a lot to learn. On the job training is a real thing. So 
just make sure that you're keeping yourself uh, mentally safe. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Erin. Hello, everyone. My name is Luke Sethlick. Um, I'm an account coordinator here at One Magnify. Um, but recently, I did get a promotion. I was a program administrator here for two years. So I've been here a total of two and a half years. Um, before that, I was at Grand Valley State University uh, doing some internships in sports marketing. Um, and then prior to that in high school, I worked at Cantoro's Treacheria, uh, a restaurant in Plymouth. I've worked there all through high school and college there. Um, this was my first job out of college. I graduated in 2020, which is right when COVID hit. So right that first year was very hard to find jobs. No one was hiring. Um, so I had to do some odd jobs here and there right after I graduated and then came over here uh, in the start of 2021. Uh, I love to play golf and every chance I get now that summer, it's great weather. Used to, it was like 50 like last last week it felt like, but now it's, it's great. So um, every week I like to do that. I love to travel. Um, especially with some friends and my family, like in the pictures here. Uh, I got to go to Yosemite a few years ago. Um, I was lucky enough to go to the Rose Bowl, which is very cool with my brother. And then I played at TPC Scottsdale in Arizona for my senior trip in college uh, with my dad. So um, other than that, anything Detroit sports or Michigan football, basketball related, I feel like I know a good amount. I'm huge fans of all those teams. So um, definitely a great way to uh, meet people in the office, talk sports, stuff like that. So um, about standing out, uh, some fears I faced starting here um, was not learning things quickly enough. So with being out of school for a year, um, I was the kind of student that tried to memorize things. Um, I would take as many notes as I could and just really cram before tests. Um, I really learned here uh, that it's a whole different style of learning. Uh, as long as you know where to find information, you don't need to memorize anything. You can just pull things up, whether you have it in a Word document or if you write things down on a, on a notepad. Um, you don't really need to, it's great to memorize things, but it's not required. As long as you know where to find the information, that's all you need. Um, and then being the youngest person in the department, um, all the jobs I had prior to coming here, um, there were people around my age that I was working with. Um, and then I find out right when I start, I'm the youngest by probably like at least five to 10 years, um, which was a little bit intimidating at first. Um, I'm still one of the youngest people here still, um, but it really is not a big deal. Um, age doesn't really mean anything like I thought it would um, coming into this job. So uh, that's not really anything to worry about um, when you get here. Um, how I stood out for my fears, uh, for my peers is focus on the positives. So in program administration, uh, we take calls from dealerships and uh, customers about getting incentive offers for their Ford vehicles. So I notice a lot of people um, when it comes to um, our end of year reviews um, or mid year reviews, no one or not a lot of people were putting down like their positive phone calls or positive emails that they receive from customers or clients or uh, dealerships. So I started doing that. Um, I was mentioned from uh, the leadership in the department that uh, they love that I did that. Uh, it's a great way to stand out, especially since not everyone does things like that. And it's really easy to get bogged down by the negative interactions you have with things or if you're struggling to learn things. As long as you focus on the positives, that really makes you uh, stand out a lot more. Um, and then recently, like I mentioned, I did start as an account coordinator about a month and a half ago. Um, with the amount of work and, uh, and the knowledge I've learned for uh, specific incentive offers and programs and Ford in general, um, I felt like I learned enough to seamlessly transition into my new role as account coordinator. Um, so what I do now is I work with uh, Ford clients directly um, setting up some new incentive offers, keeping up to date with uh, any incentive offers that are going on right now. Um, and the amount of work that I learned through my previous position here, um, it really benefited me. I didn't really have any time to, uh, I didn't have to take much time to train on learning everything from the ground up. I had a great knowledge base uh, and that really um, uh, separated me from other people possibly for the position. Um, 
And advice for someone starting a new position or a new career is always look for opportunities. Like, uh, like Aaron and Afra mentioned, uh, always say yes to new opportunities that come your way. Whether it's a manager or a coworker is saying, hey, can you help me out with this uh, question I have or anything like that? Always say yes. It's, if, you, if you mess up, that's a learning opportunity, which is also an opportunity you can look for as well. Um, so the more situations you put yourself in, especially when you're starting to develop your career, the better your knowledge base is going to be and your skills um, as well going forward. All right. Thank you, Luke. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. My name is Melissa Van Turnout. I am uh, one of the senior HR business partners here at One Magnify. Uh, so a little bit about my professional uh, career. Um, I started in HR back in 2004. Um, so obviously that, that means I started uh, work when I was five years old, um, but uh, been in various industries, uh, worked in staffing for about 10 years, worked at um, in manufacturing, and then most recently waste management before I came over to One Magnify uh, last year. Uh, so I've been here for about 14 months and um, loving it uh, so far and uh, look forward to, you know, a great career here. Uh, a, little, a little bit about me personally. I love traveling with my husband of 20 years, Ryan. Uh, we definitely prefer traveling somewhere warm with palm trees if we have a choice. Um, but we also love golfing, working out, watching sports, uh, and spoiling our, our fur babies. So just like Erin, we have a fur family uh, in my household as well. So those are my, my fur babies, and that's our, our HR team on the top there. All right. So it's interesting listening to the other speakers because, you know, I, I certainly had similar fears to some of them at certain points of my career, you know, and at my point in my career, I've got some different fears. Um, but like Luke, for example, I had a fear of being young, at, you know, when I first was starting out. Um, but one of the fears that I had starting One Magnify is, you know, the company size, number of employees. Uh, One Magnify is definitely the biggest company I've ever worked for. I'm used to about 100 to 250 employees. So that means that it's going to take me a long time to get to know everybody. And in human resources, the employees are my customers. So I definitely need to get to know them. Um, and I still don't know everybody, but I, I keep working at it and building, you know, the relationships when I, I have the opportunities. You know, uh, we hit, we had about over 500 employees when I started last year, and we've got over 700 now. So it's, it's going to keep me busy for sure. Um so, you know, another fear I had was adjusting to remote work. Uh, I, I'm probably different than a lot of people, but I actually have only worked for uh, remotely a handful of times. And that was about 10 years ago, you know, well before it was the norm. Um, even at the height of COVID, I was working for a manufacturing company and um, they wanted me and HR, uh, all of the office staff to, you know, have that physical presence right. for our line workers who had to be coming every single day and, and couldn't work for home, from home. So I wasn't really sure um what remote work would look like and not seeing everybody you know every day in the office because I really enjoy being around people um I'm in a I'm on a hybrid schedule right now so part remote part in the office and it really ended up being the best of both worlds to me um you know so it, I really I, I know that for a lot of people remote work does provide a great convenience and flexibility but there does, you know, still seem to be a desire for that human to human contact. I know with our interns last year, they definitely said that they wanted to see more in person events and be a part of that. So um, it's good to hear that. And, and obviously, we're slowly seeing, you know, companies ask you to go back to work. Um, so it's, it's something to consider when finding a new role, what your preference is, you know, what kind of flexibility you have and what you really need. Um, and so the general fear of change is also something that I had, you know, it's always intimidating starting a new role, no matter how far into your career you are. But if you don't take that chance, you'll never know what would have been. Um, when I moved on from my past companies, one could say that it was the, you know, wasn't the best decision for me long term because I'm obviously no longer there. But actually, you know, while not every company I work for was perfect, I still learned something from each of my positions that actually has helped me in future roles. So ultimately, I don't look back on all those experiences, you know, as a, as a bad decision. <clears throat> so as far as what to look for, um, and starting, you know, with new company, you can look at company reviews, uh, for example. So um, 
Glassdoor is a de definitely well known, but uh, I would say be careful with that and look for constructive posts. So just like consumer good reviews, like on Amazon, you know, many times you're going to see an abundance of bad posts uh, as people don't tend to say anything if everything is going well, you know, no news is good news, but uh, when there's bad news, you hear about it. So, you know, definitely, um, you know, look for, look for that constructive feedback there, but um, social media can provide a lot of good information for you too. Uh, you can kind of see what the company is, uh, what, you know, kind of values they hold, if, if it's something that, um, you know, hold, you, if they hold the same values as you, what's important to them, and what their employees are saying. A lot of people post comments on and LinkedIn about posts that work there, um, and you can kind of get a, a better feel for how a company operates and what their culture might be like. Okay, so speaking of, of culture, um, Questions to ask during an interview, uh, you know, why do you like working for, you know, the company? It's probably a good question. Um, so instead of asking somebody how long you worked here, thinking that if they've been with the company a long time, they love it there, ask open-ended questions. You'll get a better idea of, um, you know, what the company is like. Another question is, you know, what makes you proud to work at this company? That's probably a deeper level question. Um, and instead of maybe saying that they provide free lunches or something like that, you might get a, you know, I work, I'm proud to work with One Magnify because of all the community outreach efforts they do. Um, that might then springboard you into additional questions asking about employee research uh, resource groups. So you can see that picture on the right there is us at the Greenify event last year. Um, you know, Greenify is focused on our environmental efforts. So. Um, if that doesn't give you the answer you need, then just ask them directly, you know, just describe the culture for me. What is it like on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, you know, probe, you know, questions about the ERG groups, if that's um, important to you. Okay. Um, and then advice to somebody starting a new career, take advantage of company events. I know we've all kind of said it already, but it's true. You know, whether it's in person or virtual, uh, you know, it will allow you to meet people outside of your team or department um, that you wouldn't normally interact with. So our, our coffee chats, our, um, you know, in-person events, you know, that is definitely good for you to uh, be a part of. Um, and really, it um, allows you to connect with people and, and network and share your experiences with, with them. Maybe you're working on a project that they can, you know, help you collaborate on, uh, or they can help you connect with people outside of your group that can also help you. Uh, so you're just never going to know what, what it's going to be like until you, you know, take that leap of faith and, and you know, put yourself out there and talk to people. So, but um, lastly, be inquisitive and ask questions. So learn more about the company um, and about the people that work there. So really, the, the more you know about everything and everyone, I, I really do feel that the more valuable you can be um, in that organization. Thank you. So Carrie, that's all of our slides. And I don't know if questions came in during that when people, our, uh, our panelists were talking, but we would love to um, answer some questions people might have from what anybody presented or something you've been been wondering um, and you just want some some extra people to answer. I loved all the examples. Thank you guys for all um, diving into your personal experiences and your um, your examples of what made you nervous, but uh, would love to hear about either other people's experiences as they have entered into the internship realm, um, some things that you're nervous about as you uh, make the leap into full time. Um, so please put your, your comments and questions into the chat or feel free to, to chime in and, and ask away. Stop this. Okay, so I have a question um, and I, I appreciate everyone's chatting with me. Um, Afra, I love, who doesn't love Daniel Ricardo? Um, I appreciate that and Cantoros as well. Um, to you, Luke, my husband would like to be your best friend. Would like your, your discount, if your past discount, I should say. He's like, I'm just going to work here because I need this discount to come here. Um, but what, and anyone can jump in here, but what was, um, you know, that first day like? And and obviously you are you have to be nervous, right? We all are. But what was it like and what... <laughs> How do you find your friend group? Like, maybe that's two separate questions, but um, I think someone mentioned that. Like, 
find who you can talk to, who your circle is, and you know how how do you navigate that of that first day walking in and then you know buddying up with someone to help help you maybe along the way. Yeah, I think well, I'll answer that, Carrie. You know, the my first day, um, it was wonderful to see that my whole entire team, who normally works well, most of them work, work remotely, they all came in. Um, we had lunch together, and it was great to meet everybody in person. It was overwhelming for sure because we have a big team, um, and I met people outside of you know the the team as well. Even actually, Mark came and joined us too. So I thought that was pretty incredible that the, the CEO came and uh, joined a lunch as well because um, now. Not a lot of people come in the office. So I think, you know, it's nice when we can all get together and do that. But it was intimidating. I think I focused on just trying to meet as many people as I could, trying to remember everybody's names, which was, you know, difficult too. Um, but I think, you know, like you said, partnering up with somebody, having a work buddy, I think is important. Um, whether it's your team or whether it's outside of your team, if you get the opportunity to branch out. Um, it's it's important to have that kind of sounding board um, and, and having that comfort level that hey, no matter what's going on, you know, you can talk to that person. Um, you know, I'm lucky in my group that I have my buddy group because it's my team. Um, they're wonderful people and I love working with them every day and I, I definitely look, look forward to it. So, but um, certainly recommend getting getting that buddy. And I know you mentioned uh, specifically that you like that interaction and going into the office. And, and I'm not sure anyone has, has mastered this, but in this world of virtual hybrid in-person, but, but focusing more on the virtual and hybrid schedules, how do you, how do you navigate that when you do have questions? Cause it's so much, I, at least I'm a people person too. I like seeing people. Um, it's so much easier when you're in the hallway to be like, my question, you know, where it's, it's almost like escalated and feels the magnitude of what you're asking might feel like this isn't writing now. It's an email. People can see that this, maybe I feel like this is a dumb question. Although they always say there's no dumb question. I know it was said earlier, but like, you know, it just seems easier to navigate that when you're in the hallway and be like, just quickly just popping my head in real quick question on this um any tips and tricks of how to navigate that when you are in a virtual slash hybrid schedule yeah I might pop onto this one and say um, something that's worked for me when it comes to those quick and easy conversations versus something that does need a paper trail is paper trails are really good for emails and those IM messages versus on um, Teams, Zoom, anything like that. That's my hallway. That's my hallway conversation, honestly. Mm. <laughs> Having like some Slack and IM or whatever your company tends to use. That's a good idea. Throwing it out there. I like that. I have some thoughts too on this, Carrie. So yeah, jump um, in. When I started here in 2021, I was the first like strictly remote, like remote or hybrid hire. Uh, in, in program headquarters. Um, so I never had really any experience working in an office, which is kind of strange. So I've only been like remote. So to answer your question, um, you, you kind of get uh, familiar with like who your team is. I was lucky enough to start um, when we had something called Welcome Act going on at One Magnify. It's like an onboarding, uh, like one week period where you get to meet a whole bunch of people that are also new. Um, so I met people through that. Um, you also get to meet some people in your department as well uh, that has, that's had some experience, but it kind of is, um, you get to message people on Teams really quickly and they respond back, everyone's on their computer. So it kind of is a little bit easier than going out of your way in a hallway and asking, but um, it really is, it's not, it's not as horrible as it, it is as it, uh, it's made out to be. And maybe it actually is easier for you, you and your generation that hasn't been in. Maybe there is an advantage there where like, I, I, I will date myself, you know, like we, we like going into the office where, where that's our norm. This is, you're literally that first year where this is now your norm. Um, so maybe I'm just old school and, and this, this question is a little bit more geared towards me, but I'm glad you guys are navigating it um, far better than... Maybe, maybe we are. 
Mark, how are you doing? I miss you. Uh, I'm doing okay. I mean, it's funny you said that about folks who've been around the workplace pre-pandemic and how this transition is probably more traumatic for us. And and I I mean I I see it. Um, the folks who work for me that are later in their careers uh, are probably struggling more with an all digital relationship with their peers and coworkers than folks like a lot of the young folks on this call that have are digital native, number one, digital native from the time you all were 10, 11, 12 years old, you have been connected to a phone or, or to a, a smart device. And so being digital is, is the social interaction through how you've always operated. Um, I think I think the bigger challenge is for for those of us who, who aren't digital native or who have become digital native later in life to change our behaviors to accommodate the way you all are coming to the workplace. And that's part of leadership, right? I mean, we have to meet you where you are. Um, and and that's you know, your expectations should also be uh, to recognize that some folks aren't going to be as comfortable um, meeting you where you are. And, and you got to be a little bit more proactive about it. but. But yeah, I miss those hallway conversations and those little pop-ins when people stick their head in my office and say, hey, what's going on, Mark? Or, or boy, Mark, at the town hall meeting last week, you said this, I have a question. And I know that it's a lot harder for somebody to send me an email with that question because it is way more formal when you put it in an email. It's even formal to some extent when you drop it into Teams or, or something along those lines versus just seeing me at the you know, coffee machine, making a cup of coffee, and uh, and just ask me about what's going on, um, but you know a couple of things that uh, everybody I think said was say yes. Uh, that to me is when you're getting started in your career, you are think of it as an apprenticeship. You are learning a business. You're getting paid to learn the business, and if you say yes to everything, you will gain so much more experience, so much faster than your peers who are saying no to things that by the time you get to 25, you might have six years worth of experience in three years because you got involved and you said yes. And I think that not only will you build out your professional skill set, but you're also going to build out your professional network. And whether it's inside your company or outside your company, if you say yes to joining the softball team, say yes to getting on the uh, uh, women's initiative group, we call it Amplify at One Magnify, and say yes to when your boss says, hey, we got this new project, Anybody have some time, you want to jump into it, you raise your hand and you say yes, suddenly you're viewed as a proactive self-starter with initiative and you're going to get more and more opportunities to grow. And, um, and I just think that it's, it's absolutely critical for you to do it. Um, oh, there's a question in there. Okay, so how do, you, how do you avoid burnout? And this is going to sound awful. You're going to get burnout. You just are. It's the nature of, of what we do. Um, you have to have coping mechanisms to manage when you are burnout, but hopefully the things that you're volunteering to do and you're participating in are, are creating value for you and are lighting up your passions. And so, yeah, you may be burnout because I'll give you a great example. I served as the chair of the United Way board. I was the president of the Navy League of the United States. I served on some committees for the mayor and for the governor. I also ran a company. And, uh, and I have three kids and I definitely got burnt out, but every one of those things that I participated in, I was very passionate about being engaged in it. And so it was the right kind of effort um, that made me love what I was doing. And eventually I pulled back. I'm no longer the board chair of United Way. Um, I've hired a lot of great people at One Magnify. I've taken a lot of things off my plate, but, but you just have to have the, you figure out how to cope with the burnout because we every single person, everybody, whether you have a high workload or a low workload, you will have stress in your job and burnout is just the most extreme form of stress. And if you recognize that up front, you'll find a way to manage it. And maybe it will mean that sometimes you do have to say no, but I would find that, that point um, by saying yes uh, before you say no, because you're just gonna miss out on all these awesome opportunities to build your career, build your network, build your relationships, and maybe discover some things that you, you wouldn't have known about yourself uh, along the way because you're exposing yourself to new and different initiatives. So 
Yeah. Burnout is definitely something you got to deal with. Yeah. I, I, and I would agree with all that. And, and I say served on the United Way board, uh, just as or a, a younger right. board. Yeah. Um, at the same time as Mark did, and it was a ride. It was so fun, mostly because Mark was the the senior board, and um, and it was such a great opportunity. And it was five years that I did it, and at the end, I just but I use it as an opportunity. To, it was so beneficial for my career and the yeah. connections that I built. But at by about that five six year point, I was like, you know what? I've done I've done this. I'm passing on the torch. I think I had my first child you'll know. And, and I think Mark's point is great. Like it's going to happen, but then you, you have those coping mechanisms in place and you say, you know what, on to the next, next one. It's also really. I I would add Carrie too. If you, if you find yourself doing something that makes you miserable, stop doing it. Yeah. You know, if you're in a job that makes you unhappy, go find another job. Um, There are so many different things that you can do that will make you happy and you'll get paid to do it too. Um, but don't, don't, you know, put yourself in a position where you're unhappy or miserable or you're suffering. That, that's not fair to you. It's not fair to the people who are around you either, because if you're unhappy, um, you will not be the person who makes the workplace brighter. And I feel like every company wants uh, folks who make the workplace brighter to be there. And so, yeah, so if you're, if you're feeling burnt out, and it's because you're unhappy with what you're doing. Stop doing what you're doing and, and move on. The wise words, Mark Petroff. Uh, <laughs> folks, you have now gotten a glimpse into One Magnify. And again, truly one of the, the most fun places to work. I think on the outside looking in. <laughs> in all fairness, <laughs> I'm on the outside. But always um, looking in, you guys have such an amazing team. Um, and it starts with Mark, the leader, I just l- truly one of my favorite people in the world. So thank you so much for not only your continued support of this program, but your time today, your insight, your expertise. I'm so grateful for, for everyone joining in, um, not only from One Magnify, but from all the, the guests joining in as well. We appreciate your time. And, um, and yeah. We will we will look forward to seeing you tomorrow and Thursday and every other Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday throughout the summer at 11 a.m. for some great conversations as well. But thank you again, Team One Magnify. We will see you all soon.